Hello students, this is the second video on poetry for this week and we move back to the world of symbol, metaphor and simile. All the same things apply as to our fiction section when we discussed imagery. Um, and similarly, a image or a metaphor or simile can be something that exists momentarily on a line of poetry or can go through a whole work as an extended metaphor kind of like the story we read the angel the, the old man with angel wings <coughs> and the poem that we read in the last section the flea sometimes metaphors last the whole poem sometimes they are just quick descriptive aids um, so the poems I want to look at today the first being one of the most popular American poems ever written by Robert Frost and this one is on page 892, The Road Not Taken. And I would be surprised if you hadn't heard this poem. Um, it's extremely popular. It's very, very simple. Um, and it deals with a metaphor that I think that we can process rather easily. And that comes to you in the very first two lines. The two roads diverged in a yellow wood and an and sorry I could not travel both. And be one travel along I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to see where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other. And we've all been in that situation where you have two choices. One looks easier than the other, but you took the hard one. Um, and this is, of course, um, probably something we do every day on some cognitive level but of course there are major decisions in life where you take a path and you'll never be able to come back to that crossroads again the path that you took is going to take you down a definite path for the rest of your life and this is sort of a meditation on that uh, wondering what the other path where it would have taken where it would have led um, I kept that for another day, um, I, but I doubted I would ever come back. Uh, the final lines, I took one less traveled by, and that's made all the difference. So it seems like the poet took the right path or the right road. So this is a very simple metaphor construction that I think you can get with, with rather easy, but it's very effective, isn't it? And the tone of the poem is really driven <coughs> Excuse me, by the metaphor. Um, discussed. The second one is uh, a little bit more gory. 892. That's not the right page number. 879, sorry. So if we go to 879, and now we're moving to a poem uh, that was written uh, in 1945. So this is right after the First World War by an American poet named uh, Randall Carroll. And this is the death of a ball, ball turret gunner. Now if you know your World War II aircraft, the bombers would often have a glass ball underneath the belly of the plane where um, a gunner would sit on a with a revolving machine gun Otherwise, they could be taken out by fighters. Um, and this is the story of somebody who had that job. <coughs> it's a very short but very powerful poem, and I don't think I've read anything quite like it. From my mother's sleep, I fell into the state. Interesting that the state is capitalized. And this is a war. And I, I hunched in its belly till my wet fur froze. Definitely an allusion to being in the womb at this particular point. Six miles from earth, loosed from its dream of life, I woke to the black flak and the nightmare fighters. So um, the war is on. And then it quickly jolts to the um, poet's demise. And this is quite jarring because... A poet can't die if it's right in the poem, but you get a sense of the quick and swift 
way in which men died in that war and the violent way in which they died. When I died, they washed me out of a turret with a hose. I mean, he was completely liquefied. So a very short, terse po poem uh, about a aspect of the war that is very impactful. It's a very powerful little poem uh, with a very simple image, very graphic, violent, visceral uh, image. And, you know, good poetry can do this. Um, moving on to the <coughs> next poem, uh, staying with World War, but this time uh, World War I. Um, if you go to 913, the great World War I poet, one of my favorite actually, is Wilfred Owen. And the tragedy of Wilfred Owen is he fought all the way through First World War and was killed in the final week of the war while trying to get back um, to England. So he was killed right at the end of the war. Um, and he, this is also a famous poem, Dolce et decorum est, uh, which is Latin for it is sweet and proper to die for one's country, which was the phrase they used to get people to sign up. You know, they used sort of a nationalistic slogan to get you to sign up. And of course, all of his poetry is about the horrors uh, of World War One. What I'd like you to do with this poem is make a list of all the metaphors and similes. Just a list. It's staggering. There's almost one per line uh, how many are in there. So it'll take you all of five minutes to go through that and make a list. I don't want to do any more because I want you to sort of experience this on your own. It's a very powerful poem. My grandfather fought at Ypres in Belgium in the First World War, so I have a great interest in World War I. Uh, <clears throat> and this poem, in this poet. Um, so look at that and make a list on that particular one. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that um, some symbols get repeated and some are ubiquitous. There are thousands of poems. The one I thought of is the Rose poem. There are tons of them. It's done to death. It's on every greeting card. The Rose, the Red Rose, the Rose of Love, <clears throat> and I have three examples, sorry, two examples in the textbook starting on 888. Um, and the point here is that you can use a brand new image that's never been used, like the ball turret gunner. But you could also use a, an image that's been used a lot and still do something interesting with it. Um, here on uh, 888 we have Dorothy Parker's One Perfect Rose. Um, and it's a comical poem. It's kind of a joke, in a way. The way it leads up to the final uh, lines. It deals with the cliché application of the rose. Uh, and in the end, you know, it makes a sarcastic point about rather than getting a rose as a gift, you know, I'd rather have something else. That's a humorous quip. You move down to the William Blake, who, who, of course, we read his London poem last week. You'll see this time the rose is looked at for its negative attributes. Uh, a sick rose, full of worms. Of course, the invisible worm being death. And all plants are germinated with the seeds of their own decay. So this is sort of a reference to life in general. general. Um, O rose, thou art sick, the invisible worm that flies in the night in the howling storm, has found thy bed of crimson joy. So death comes even when a rose is perfect, in its perfect state. And his dark secret love does thy life destroy. So a very sort of negative, twisted um, view of finality death being a part of beauty and nature. <clears throat> so this is interesting and I asked you to bring in a rose poem. We don't have a way to share those but hopefully that you can see that even the use of a common symbol can be creative in this section. And lastly the Diving, the dr diving into a Wreck by Adrian Rich is a wonderful poem 
on page um, 894. I'm not going to go through this poem. Uh, I want this to be the second part of your um, message to me. So the first one is just to make a list of all of the metaphors and similes in the Wilfred Owen poem. We were going to do this in classes and in class um, exercise, so I'm, I'm just trying to duplicate class here. And the second one is just write me a paragraph on what you think diving into the wreck is all about. Obviously if you take it on a physical level, it's about diving down into a shipwreck under the water. But it would seem that there are some heavy metaphysical, metaphorical ideas going on. What do you think Shoot the poet is talking about? Uh, diving down into herself and finding what? What is going on? What is the situation in that particular poem? So um, each of these videos, two videos, requires a response and a couple of tasks. It shouldn't take you long. It's stuff we were going to do in class anyway. Um, next week I will send you an update on the syllabus and then starting March 30th we will resume our coursework via video like this. I hope it's uh, yeah, a bit doable. Okay, see you next time.